Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from Powersonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. Today we are out on site replacing a consumer unit, or two consumer units actually, and also doing a bit of work inside a meter cabinet. Now this is part of a wider project that Matthew and Nathan have been on with this week, where we're installing some smart electric heating into a home that doesn't have gas or oil, they are all electric. So they've been running through that process and the last little phase of this work is to replace the two consumer units. I'll try and drop a picture in somewhere up here. They were in quite a dangerous state and it's in an awkward spot. There is only 225 millimetres of space and I've had a good look around and the only product I can find that fits is from M2. And I know this because we've done it a few times before when it's been really tight above kitchen cupboards and we haven't wanted to relocate the consumer units because the customer didn't want to have any damage and redecoration and all those other bits and pieces that come alongside that. So we've taken that same approach here with this one. We're going to swap what's existing, fit the M2 in. It is going to be a, a tricky wiggle to get it in, no doubt about it, but I'm sure Matthew will sort it out as we'll see through the course of this video. I've got the easy task of working in the meter cabinet, so we're going to fit a main switch an SPD in there and we're also going to have to fit an earth block and we're using one of the Proteus green terminal blocks for that. Those are absolutely brilliant, they come in green, blue, brown, black and white slash grey um, and basically they replace what we would traditionally be calling Henley blocks. Um, they're miles better than anything else on the market, if you've not tried them yet you really should do. They have the little caps that you can pull in and out to cover the openings so there's no knocking holes out. They have the two twin terminals with the Allen key fixing. I think it's a three millimeter. We've got one of those Klein drivers that are absolutely bang on for those as well. So I've got that to do in the meter cabinet. I'll show you it later on in this video. I'm going to film and record this all in the same day. Through the course of today, I'm going to share some stuff on social media and leave some deliberate mistakes in to see if anybody spots them. So if you are one of those people who spotted one of the mistakes and you've highlighted it to me, you could be in with a chance of receiving a free prize. So we'll leave that one to the end of this video. But just to put it out there, if I am going to get called out publicly, these are on purpose. So we'll go straight to site now. Matthew is already there. We've had a CEF delivery come in this morning. I've been waiting at the unit for that. We've been um, needing a few of the RCBOs for the M2 board that we didn't have in stock at the wholesale yesterday and also the SPD kit from Proteus. So I've been waiting for that. Ordered it last night. I think it was quarter past six, quarter past five, whatever it is. And then here this morning, nine o'clock with CEF online. Absolutely brilliant service. I know sometimes people slate CEF for the prices. We use them because locally they're one of the best hold sailors close to us. We have a really good relationship with our local branch and I think that's what it's all about. Every single wholesaler network has a reputation that is maybe bad in certain parts and good in others and it all comes down to that relationship you forge with the people in your local branch. So if you're not going in and speaking to them and building that up yourself, get in there, make sure you are having those conversations and see if you can get your pricing nipped down a bit tighter. Let's get straight to site and see what we're up to. So we've had our isolation made at the meter cabinet and I can now start stripping out all of these old tails. You'll note the two pairs of tails and that's from the historical economy seven that used to exist on this house long since removed. So we can remove a set of these tails out altogether and leave ourselves with just the one. There's the two Henley blocks already in there and I'm just working with Matthew who's the other side of this wall making sure he's got the right amount of tails he requires. And this is all on a 60 amp service head, so the 16 mil tails are perfectly adequate for the time being, but there are some additional changes coming here at some stage. You can see now I'm just going to pop those meter tails out from the Henley blocks as well and collecting my evidence for the post we spoke about at the start of this video. You can see now we're going to get the Henleys out the way and we'll be ready for us to now put in the Proteus SPD and main switch. Now these are absolutely brilliant. They are bang on perfect for any kind of meter cab installation because there's no overcurrent protection in there. The SPD is passive and it's really close to the source of supply. So it makes a lot of sense to be fitting these if your consumer unit is a reasonable distance from the main intake. And it makes sense here while other renovations and such are carrying out, we can have the SPD on those circuits at the origin. And you see now I'm just figuring out how best to lay this SPD out in a way. I'm not going to make my job more difficult for the long term through the course of this day, but also able to do my little experiment in terms of our um, social media posts we mentioned at the start of this video. You see just dressing the neutrals up in, I've left that blue tape on there as a bit of a flag to somebody 
to try and snag because it looks a little bit untidy and nobody likes tape on show and then just dropping that into the bottom of this Proteus SPD main switch. And that's the first clue in this video as to what might be incorrect, because those are the tails going off to the consumer unit. Now, obviously, normally that's where they would go. We generally put our load cables into the bottom of the main switch and the supply ones into the top. But if you look at how this SPD is set up with those um, linking bus bars across the top between the neutral and the lines into the SPD, Obviously, if you was to make an isolation of that main switch to replace a failed SPD module, it would still be live with inside the carrier. So that's not ideal. So in this application, you would bring your main feed into the bottom of that main switch. And that's why there is no load and supply marked on this isolator. And you can see here we're also using the Proteus Earth block for our um, earth connection and that's just so we can interrupt it to install the earth cable leading up into the SPD but of course for my little social media experiment I'm going to leave that off for the time being as a further element of snagging for somebody to potentially make you can see there these have the hex uh, sorry the allen key heads on I think the three millimeters in size and we've got the Klein tools um, screwdriver type fastening thing <laughs> that's what i'm going to call it it's like an allen key isn't it but on a screwdriver to attach the cables into it and they're under two screw heads which is absolutely brilliant and that's the same across the range be it blue brown black white gray or the green and you can see there that's me getting my pictures for stories on instagram the twitter post and the linkedin post and making all of that as neat and tidy as possible so it looks like the finished article now essentially everything would work in that setup aside from when the SPD was needed because it's got no path to earth and also if anybody was to come along and replace one of the cartridges in the SPD they wouldn't be able to make an isolation to do that because the supply is feeding straight into those little buzz bars across the top and we can move on in just a second and start to put this all as it should be ready for us to carry on with the actual job at hand. You see, I'm just going to strip these out and I've left the cables the right length to be able to get them into the correct terminal. So I'm just going to drop the consumer unit tails into the top of this main switch alongside those din sorry bus bars that link across to the SPD. And then the tails coming out of the meter can go straight into the bottom of this mains isolator as well. So get those tidied up and installed and then we can get on the blower to the supplier to come and make that connection and make sure they're happy with everything and seal everything back up as a finished job. You can see there we're just getting those tails in nice and neat and then we can pop our earth in from the earth block up into the SPD. So obviously when the SPD activates, if it senses a surge or a rise in voltage, it will dump that straight into the earth and try and take it away from all of the sensitive electronics within an installation. And this is a type two SPD. The flags are supposed to be like that. So they are a gray flag on the neutral and a green on the line. The Proteus um, indicate a fault when they have a red flag at play. You can see there now, we're just making sure everything's nicely tightened up. We'll run the torque driver across as well and make sure everything's happy. I'm just getting these lids aligned and then the meter man can come or lady can come and seal these up and make sure they're happy with everything as well. So these are an absolutely brilliant solution. As I said from Proteus, they have the mains, isolators and tails connector blocks covered off to an absolute T right across the range. And we can step back and have a look at all the handiwork and see what we think. So you'll see here that's the Proteus SPD kit all done now, wired in. These are a little bit different. And you'll have seen earlier on in this video, I actually wired it up in the wrong way. And that was for the social media post I was on about at the start of this video. And I'll tag those posts in the description of this YouTube video so you can go off and read them and see if anyone has made any unkind comments. I pretty much guarantee they will not because there is no need to be unkind online. And most people are. Sometimes these posts that, that flare up where you see all the argument and debate on, they're one in 10,000. So you don't see all the ones where nothing gets said. And I've actually had a really nice DM from someone who I'm not going to name who dealt with that in the way I would. They noticed something that wasn't right and they sent over a private message to explain how they'd had the same problem before and how they went about doing it correctly. But basically you have your main tail come in and these can catch you out because normally we'd put our supply in the top and the load comes out the bottom. But with these, because the SPD is tapped off on the top of this switch as I showed 
earlier on in the video obviously if you make an isolation a new wire you supply in the top they remain live when you're changing out the SPDs so you need to come in from the bottom here when you turn that off the SPDs are then isolated as well so you can pull them in and out note with these Proteus ones the neutral SPD is grey and the line one is green on the flags that's how they're supposed to be and otherwise they're all locked up now so we've got the tabs on both the top and the bottom the entry points and anybody who is going to come in to work on this knows that they can now be safe when they're working on the SPDs which is fantastic let's move on with the video so onto the fun stuff and this is the prior install that we had to sort out and it was actually like that the board on the right I believe did not have its front cover on at all and the board on the left it was just loosely hung on with no fixings whatsoever so that had been left exposed like that for a number of years and thankfully during the course of an EICR when the current owners purchased the property we were able to highlight a number of defects and work through correcting those alongside installing the electric heaters and you can see here Matthew's got it to the stage where his M2 board is in and then all nicely dressed up so these M2 boards are absolutely brilliant in terms of the wiring room inside them despite the fact they have that shallow height they are double pole RCBOs of the mini variety as well and that main switch with the two screws down onto the tails gives absolute confidence you're getting a reliable connection as those tails drop in there's loads of entry points and fixing points in the back Matthew's had to be a little bit inventive with some of those because of the cable routes behind this board and not wanting to drill into them. And again, in the bottom of the board, there is ample space under the buzz bar. There's lots of wiring room behind those circuit breakers to tuck your cables away. Loads of entry points in the back as well. Along the top, it's plain aside from a couple of wider um, openings at each end, but that worked for us on this install. We have opened up some holes along the top for anybody who's coming along afterwards to add cables into this, they have an easier time of it than they otherwise would because there's literally no access to this board, top or bottom. And we was trying to allow a little bit of future proofing, knowing full well there may well be some PV going in here. And you can see that's it all labeled up just to prove that the lid does open and close in that position. It is a tight squeeze, but it does work. And these are the Dimplex heaters we've been talking about. So these are the Intellirad versions. They do have the smart app control and they link in through RF. And as you can see, that's the old heater down there replaced by these much sleeker looking modern heaters with an appropriate 20 amp isolator. Don't make the mistake of using 13 amp spares on these. They will burn out. And there's the QR code on the side for easily adding them into the app as well. So it's super duper simple. All the times and controls are set from the app. So you don't need to fiddle around on these touch screens at all. But should you wish, it's all user adjustable on the actual heater itself. And the guys have had to drop some new circuits in. You can see they've neatly clipped these cables up leading over into the heaters and tidied up the filling in the wall ready for decoration and again the heater controls on there ready to go you can see up here they've used a white easy fill just so it's easily sandable for the homeowner to redecorate that in the future and i think they look the business we're not going to run around the house and look at all of these because there is the customer's possessions all over and we don't want to share that on the channel so i hope that install makes sense just to explain how we first found it there was no storage heaters, but there was the old storage heater board. Someone had long since converted those to single socket outlets. And we're just using plug-in instant heaters. The new occupiers didn't really want that. They wanted something a bit more intuitive and long-standing, if you like. So they're not just relying on portable heaters. And they opted for the Dimplex Intellirad RF system. So that has a hub that lives as a central kind of brain to everything, much in the way a nest or a hive would with a traditional gas heating system. Um, and you can control the temperature of each room individually and try and keep a set temperature for the house as a whole and equally if it detects a window or a door being left open it starts to do things to limit the use of energy so it's really quite clever and a very cost effective solution to an electric only installation might work quite well with solar panels actually and I've spoke with this particular customer about a proposal for just that so we'll see we could be back here installing a solar system in terms of the consumer unit itself, as you will have seen with the video footage through here, it was a really tight squeeze. Matthew's actually done a pretty sterling job there in the circumstances. It's hot and sweaty, not a nice place to be working, and he's made it very, very neat and tidy. And we've got a functional and safe consumer unit up there. And fair play to M2 as well for offering a product that is so um, shallow in terms of its height, 
but still having quite a lot of wiring room it is quite a deep enclosure and we went for a wide option mainly to try and cover the space of those two boards that were existing up there and because we were adding in a few extra heating circuits to account for some additions on the hall and landing and the smaller bedroom. In terms of the mistake in this video, I hope you all saw that along the way and as I mentioned in the voiceover around the meter box, um, it was really just to try and demonstrate to apprentices that you don't need to fear making a mistake when you share it on social media. I've been trying to encourage trainees and apprentices to share some posts and tag me in them as part of a giveaway we've got running for a TIS MFT and some of the EV100 adapters and I've had very very limited entries on that so far and lots of messages coming back saying people just don't want the hassle, they'll be snagged for the work, they'll be called out, there'll be all sorts of argument and debate. And I wanted to prove firsthand that that's not the case. I've made loads of mistakes on social media over the last, it's probably 10 years now, isn't it, with that been a thing. And usually you get a polite message from someone who says, I've seen this, but I think it should be done like that. And that's the way to approach it. A handful of times, maybe a dozen in total, people have been out of order and come to my posts and made unkind and unnecessary comments. But you just deal with that at the time. Don't let it push you up, put you off from sharing the stuff that you do most people will be interested in it and want to see it so please do consider sharing your stuff and as i said on the voiceover a huge shout out to the one person who did notice and offered their expertise and their own experiences privately over dms to say how they thought that should be done and i thought that was a really classy touch and i very much appreciated it so shout out to that gentleman who shall remain nameless and um, yes, if you haven't entered those giveaways, please do go and have a look on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I've shared the post about that already. You just need to create a post on any social media platform you like, tag me in it, and you can enter in to win yourself a TIS MFT Pro or one of the EV100s. Don't fear making mistakes and don't fear sharing them online. It just gives you a better prospect of learning and developing and becoming better if you have that mindset to it where you're open to people flagging some of your mistakes in a kind way to learn and develop and get better. If you're just scared of people shouting you down, then you're not going to have that opportunity and that's a shame for you more than anything else. If you've got any questions in and around this video, before we end it, the awesome Proteus main switches, the M2 consumer unit featured heavily, and all of the hand tools and stuff I've shown are all things I've bought myself. None of this has been given, it's not sponsored, it's just um, real world installation based on stuff we bought for the day job and yeah other than that get involved in the comments and i'll see you on the next one